Hello everyone, this is Mr. Bones, and I'm going to share four true fall horror stories. I know so many people who love the fall, but the people in these stories will tell you otherwise. Our favorite holiday of the year is Halloween. It's usually a big deal for my family. However, no wooden tombstones or plastic skeletons appeared in our neighbor's yard. We began to panic when we discovered their house was not decorated on October 15th. The Millers, who do not celebrate Halloween, were treated by pumpkin cream cheese cupcakes by one of the other neighbors that afternoon. He offered to lend our new neighbors an inflatable ghost and an animatronic witch. Following their recent move to our neighborhood, the Millers might not have had time to buy props. Amy tried next. We put up bright orange flyers every year listing Halloween events and reminding people about our unusual trick-or-treating hours. Amy asked the Millers if they had had any questions about the program. As Mr. Miller shakes his head, she delicately inquires who among the Miller family and members will be handing out candy during the graveyard shift. Nobody, he answered. We don't celebrate Halloween. We couldn't believe it. Terry walked up to the Miller's house and delivered two huge sacks of candy. He tried to make our new neighbors understand just how important Halloween was in our town. It was fine if the Millers didn't want to decorate or participate in any events, but they should at least hand out candy to trick-or-treaters. Mr. Miller told Terry just where he could stick his candy and ordered him off the property. A few hours before trick-or-treating began, and I made one final attempt. For the last time, Miss Miller spat in my face. We are not participating in this evil, godless, pagan holiday. Just hear me out, I pleaded. All I ask is that you let me sit here on your porch and pass out candy. Please, it's for your own safety. For your own, the hulking shape of Mr. Miller appeared in the hallway behind his wife. Are you threatening my family? You got out of here right now, mister. And even one of you heathens sets foot on my lawn tonight, I'm calling the police. Trick-or-treaters headed to the Millers, not knowing what was going to happen next. When a big group of kids arrived at the Millers' property, in anticipation of getting more candy, Mr. Miller came out screaming and chased them away. After that, I think people got the message not to go near the Millers' house. I'm just wondering what happened for them to hate Halloween so much. My friends and I had met up to practice for an upcoming show around the fall of 2021. In order to get back to where my car was, I had taken the train while it was still operating and was catching the night bus. I had no money to get a taxi or lift at the time. When the bus finally came around, I got on, paid the $2 bus fare and sat down. The rest of the ride was pretty uneventful as everyone was keeping to themselves. Pretty soon, the bus began to empty out as people got off at their stations. It was me and this one man who was giving me a weird vibe. I caught him looking at me a few times. I prayed that he would not get off at the same time as me, but unfortunately, that's exactly what happened once we finally made it to my stop. When I began walking towards my car, I looked behind me to find the man following me. He was keeping a bit of distance from me, but I was still paranoid that he was 100% following me. I began to pick up the pace and grab my keys while also clutching onto a pocket knife my roommate gave to me for protection. As soon as I reached my car, I jumped right in and immediately locked the doors. The man at this point caught up to me and walked over to the passenger side of my car. However, fortunately, I had already locked it so he couldn't get in. Not even bothering to put my seatbelt on, I started the engine and drove out of the parking lot quickly. Once I felt safe enough, I put my seatbelt on and flagged down a member of security from the transportation system. I saw that the man who stalked me was still at the station, so I pointed him out and explained what happened. The security officer looked a bit annoyed, but it wasn't directed at me. It was annoyance like, I can't believe this happened again. He told me he'd, he'll take care of it from here, and I thanked him before driving back to my apartment. A few days later, I bought pepper spray, and ever since that evening, I have never left my apartment without it. I keep it out and ready to be used, and fortunately, I haven't had a repeat of being stalked to my car. 
It scares me to think, though. What would have happened if I didn't lock my doors on time? What would the stranger have done to me? Would he pull out a weapon to try and take advantage of me? This is unfortunately an everyday reality for some people. I'm going to share a very short but terrifying moment. I had just finished going on a short night walk with some friends, had a great time, and did my standard night out thing. Dancing, meeting, and flirting with new people, enjoying the lovely fall night. It was midnight when I disembarked and entered the parking garage. I took the elevator to the bottom floor of the garage and got to the door of my car when I heard a loud bang of the door on the garage elevator slam open into the wall. I turn around to find a guy who was relatively tall and wide screaming in a guttural rage, sprinting towards me. He was surprisingly nimble and very fast for his weight as he was running in between cars in a straight line to where I was standing. His eyes were wide open, so wide you could see his entire iris with plenty of the whites of his eyes to spare. His gaze was locked directly on me. I was just frozen in absolute shock confusion and terror i couldn't even think of the rational thing to do which would have been to get in my car and lock the doors there was no way a little guy like me could take this guy on and he obviously seemed ready to beat me into a state of unconsciousness i wondered whether i had accidentally hit on his girlfriend or, or whether i was about to get mugged as quickly as it started when he was about half the distance from the elevator to me he came to a complete stop he stopped screaming and his face relaxed into a neutral, placid, and blank stare. He proceeded to turn around and walk at a regular pace toward the elevator, pushed the button, got in, and left without looking back. I just stood there for a moment, nervously chuckled to myself, and then drove home. I'm assuming I was getting trolled, but the odd thing was, we were the only ones on that level, and he didn't have a recording device that I could see. I didn't see anyone follow me into the garage entrance, and I don't know why he got off on my level to begin with. Was he expecting me to be there? If so, did he know I was there? What are your thoughts on this? Before we get to the last story in the video, which is the creepiest, are you loving these horror stories yet? If so, please go ahead and give us a thumbs up, and subscribe to our page for our latest videos. All of this happened two years ago in November 2020 during a campfire one night. I noticed this sickly looking dog staring at me from my neighbor's window. It was my best friends who lived next door and I thought, oh, maybe they adopted an older dog. So I asked them when I saw them tomorrow. They looked confused and said, dog, we don't have a dog. I said, I saw this old looking dog in y'all's window last night. That's when it all started. The next night, I was sitting in my chair next to the fire with my sleepy puppy when I heard a loud bark coming from my backyard. My ears were hurting from the noise. My dog now fully awake looks at me in a you heard that too kind of way. I instantly got up and walked to my rear window. I saw two eyes looking at my house, so I grabbed a lamp and shined it through my window and saw a dog. The same old dog from the night before. But it wasn't a dog, well not a normal one. It was gray with big bulging eyes, tongue hanging up to the side, and dried blood on its upper lip. I turned around and got my hunting rifle and my pistol. I grabbed a flashlight, and when I opened my back door, I noticed that the dog was nowhere to be seen. It was as if it had vanished into thin air. I went back inside, confused and wondered what I just saw. After settling back down, I decided I should go to bed. As I was brushing my teeth, I heard the super loud bark again. I peeked out of the blind, and nothing was there. No eyes, nothing. I shook it off and walked to my bedroom and laid down. After 30 minutes, I heard the loud bark again, and I immediately grabbed my pistol from my nightstand, with my dog not far behind. I hurried down the hallway, turned around the corner to go down the stairs, and there it was, staring at me from the bottom of my stairs, moonlight shining on it. I aimed my pistol as my dog started crying. And at that point, I knew it wasn't my imagination. It was there. I aimed and shot one round. I ran down the stairs, flipped on the light, and it was gone, nowhere to be found. I was confused and scared. I sat in my chair wondering what that was. I've seen grizzly bears pretty close, but nothing compared to what happened tonight. As I'm thinking, I heard three knocks at my door, and it made me jump. I ran to my door, 
opened it, ready for anything. Luckily, it was just my neighbors. They heard the shot and ran over. I told them what happened, and they looked at me confused, but believed me because of how shaken up I was. It's been two years since that incident, and I have nightmares often. The good news is, I haven't seen it since, but always wondered what I saw that night.